Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcast on the effects of 5G wireless communication on human health. The fifth generation of communication technologies known as 5G is fundamental to achieving a European gigabyte society by 2025. But connecting everything to the internet everywhere will entail use of higher frequencies and billions of additional connections. So how will this affect our health and that of our children? Is 5G really safe? And what do we really know about it? Stay with us. The internet has become an essential part of our lives and societies, and the more we have it, the more we need it. That's true. But as existing networks become overburdened, providers are looking to the next big technology solution, 5G, and the European Union doesn't want to miss this chance. And plans are certainly ambitious. Making 5G a reality for citizens and businesses will kick off by ensuring that at least one major city in every EU country will be 5G enabled by the end of 2020 and that all urban areas and major terrestrial transport paths have uninterrupted 5G coverage by 2025. This would allow much larger volumes of data to be transported almost instantly, reducing response time and enabling instantaneous connectivity to billions of devices. Connecting hospitals with homes and medical schools, cars with traffic centres, schools with libraries all around the world. The possibilities of the Internet of Things are endless, but this can only be achieved by creating a very dense network of antennas and transmitters. In other words, the number of higher frequency base stations and other devices will increase. So it's natural to wonder, what are the health risks and radiation dangers of 5G? Stay with us. Let's first look into how this technology works. Since the first mobile phones appeared, wireless networks have always operated on the same radio frequency bands of the electromagnetic spectrum. But as these radio wave highways become increasingly congested, providers are looking to expand into the higher frequencies of millimeter waves. For the first time, 5G will use millimeter waves in addition to the microwaves that have been used to date in 2G, 3G and 4G technology. Due to the limited coverage of these frequencies, to implement 5G, cell antennas will have to be installed very close to one another, which will result in a constant exposure of the population to millimetre wave radiation. Now, how does the EU regulate electromagnetic fields and 5G exposure? Well, the EU has strict rules in place limiting our exposure to electromagnetic fields. And while these limits are non-binding, some member states have gone even further and adopted even stricter limits. The EU also encourages member states to establish a common protective framework and measurement systems and to ensure that the population is well informed about the health impact of electromagnetic fields. So what are the risks? Let's look at what the main agencies say about it. The International Agency for Research in Cancer, which is part of the World Health Organization, classified radio frequency electromagnetic fields as possibly carcinogenic to humans back in 2011, so the European Environment Agency has long advocated precaution. While the risks of exposure to electromagnetic fields were initially downplayed, in 2018 the Scientific Committee on Health, Environmental and Emerging Risks indicated the possible hazard for ecosystems and species as high. Indeed, concern was expressed that telecom companies had sponsored some of the studies previously undertaken. In fact, according to that committee, due to the lack of evidence of harm caused by 5G technologies, it is uncertain as to whether there are biological consequences to 5G exposure. The Council of Europe also recommended reducing exposure to electromagnetic fields, especially from mobile phones and particularly to protect children and young people who are most at risk of developing head tumours. The Council of Europe also recommends to reassess current exposure limits set by the International Commission of Non-Ionising Radiation Protection and to advance research into potential new health risks. And one thing is sure, there is no shortage of academic literature on EMF exposure and 5G in particular, but conclusions vary. Indeed, so part of the scientific community, mainly doctors and researchers in medical sciences, argue that EMF exposure does impact negatively on our health, elevating the risk of cancer, causing genetic damage or neurological disorders, and this will only get worse with 5G. So they recommend delaying the rollout of 5G until all these potential hazards have been fully investigated by scientists who are independent from industry. In this respect, some scientists consider it necessary to establish new exposure limits that take account of the new characteristics of exposure. 
as characteristics of the 5G signals such as pulsing seem to increase the biological and health impacts of exposure, including DNA damage, which is considered to be a cause of cancer and neurodegenerative diseases. The future use of millimetre waves together with the increasing density of wireless devices and antennas raise further concerns, so more studies will surely be needed to determine whether 5G is or is not safe for humans and the environment and to update our exposure limits. Meanwhile, a cautious approach seems to be the most reasonable way forward. No doubt, but while debates on the health impacts of 5G multiply in Europe and across the globe, there is an urgent need for economic recovery and leadership in implementing digital technologies. So stay tuned. You're listening to European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts.